This game is called Tribes of Midgard. It's a survival action RPG with elements of Diablo and Minecraft set in a Norse mythological world where I will play for 100 days and try to build, craft, explore, and fight the legends of the Vikings to reach Valhalla. All right, welcome everyone. We are doing 100 days in Tribes of Midgard. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set down this thing called the All Forge. Um, from here, I can craft a bunch of structures that will help me build like tools, weapons, boats, you know, armor, all the good stuff. Uh, first thing I wanna focus on is getting the tool grinder, which will allow me to make a pickaxe, a hatchet, and you know, some other good tools. Uh, for that, we need three flint. So I have to go find flint. So I was searching for some flint and managed to get my first piece by leading this enemy to the big hammer lady at spawn. Then I found another pile of flint on the ground, which gave me enough to build my tool grinder. After gathering a few more things, I returned to my forge and crafted the tool grinder and a meal cauldron. Now I needed branches to craft my first tool, the flint pickaxe. While exploring, for one last branch, I was attacked by a small pack of wolves. I decided to stand my ground and kick my way out of this fight. Doing so did give me some wolf teeth and fur, which I could eventually use later. Eventually, I found my last branch needed while I was dodging a goblin and dark elf. Arriving home, I crafted both a flint lumber axe and a pickaxe. Now every bench in this game can be leveled up with resources in order to craft better materials, tools, weapons, and armor. So my next goal for day one was to upgrade my tool grinder in order to make stone tools which were better than these flint ones. In order to craft them, I would need more flint and stone, which I could get by mining these stone deposits. While looking for more deposits, I leveled up, which gave me one blessing point. Now blessings are kind of like skills, so my first one was used on increasing damage with bows by 20%, as the bow was going to be one of the easiest weapons to craft. Anyways, I eventually found my last stone deposit while being chased by more goblins. After getting the stone, I turned around and gave these goblins the boot. Back at home, I upgraded the grinder and built a sickle. The sickle would be good for harvesting anything on the ground like flint, bushes, and branches. I then realized in order to make the stone tools, I would of course need even more stone. So I headed back out to find some. I collected the stone I needed for my upgrades and went back to my camp. My next goal for this day was to make a weapon furnace, which as you can probably guess, just makes weapons. I was going to need iron, and luckily I had marked an iron deposit nearby and found a second deposit while heading back. Crafting and then placing my new weapon furnace, I was able to craft a villager sword and bow. I then traveled to a nearby barricade. Breaking down these barricades not only gives me access to new areas, but it also drops a ton of good resources for later, like cut stone and wrought iron. To end the day, I had one final thing I wanted to craft. It was an armor loom. Which, once again, as you can probably guess, is where I'd craft armor. I only needed leather, since I had collected fur earlier from a few wolves. Now leather dropped from the dark elves, so I went on a little bit of an elf hunt. After gathering the leather I needed, I found this strange event marker. I came across this large stag called Dane. Going up to the stag, I was able to commune with it. Doing so completed the event and also boosted me to level 5. But by now, it was dark out. So there was no time to use my blessings. I needed to get home. Starting day two back at home, I crafted and placed several new workstations. These included the construction bench used for building a base, the armor loom for crafting armor, the shield rack for crafting shields, and the ammunition shelf for crafting different types of arrows. Using the armor loom, I crafted the villager set of armor. I also crafted a shield to use with my one-handed sword, boosting my power rating to 134. My plan for day two was to gather plenty of resources for upgrading my workstations and gear. While exploring, I ran into this large dark elf witch. With the witch having a yellow health bar, meaning she was an elite, I was a little nervous, but I still jumped into this fight. Using a ton of my cooked foods, I was able to defeat this witch. And nearby, I found this sorcerer called Fafnir, who was selling all kinds of stuff like resources, food, potions, and maps. In return, he only wanted some souls. Souls were collected from doing just about anything in Midgard. But I decided to save my souls for later. Heading into the land of pools, I found a lot of useful resources here, including iron and silver. 
but I had to fight a lot of goblins for these resources. Oh yeah, I was almost killed by this giant troll. While heading back home, I was slowly ambushed by a group of hell things. They dropped healthing fingernails and rings, which I could use later on. Starting day 3 early, I was attacked by a group of wolves and goblins. Luckily, these are the weaker enemies of Midgard, so I was able to beat them. And once I was home, I upgraded my weapon furnace to level 2 with the iron and silver I had been collecting. This let me upgrade both my sword and bow to level 2. Traveling back out into the forest, I came across this large camp. I went inside and after clearing the lower part of the camp, I headed up to the top. Here, there was another dark elf witch. I went through all of my food in order to defeat her. And it was kind of worth it, actually, since I found this level 2 prestigious treasure chest. Back at home, I upgraded the armor loom to level 2. I then was able to craft better armor. The armor I chose was the raider set, which also increases axe damage. So, I decided to switch from a sword and shield to a one-handed axe and shield, like a true viking. With my new armor and weapons, I set out looking for more resources. I came across this ash beach, which was filled with these unsunken warriors. Now these warriors are a really good source of yarn, which I would need later. After defeating those warriors, I searched the beach, and found amethyst, which was another useful resource I needed for upgrading. To end my day, I went back to my camp, I crafted and placed lumbering, mining, and tanning stands. For my fourth day, I upgraded my shield rack and then crafted a new and better shield. After that, I headed out to investigate a nearby cave. Inside the cave, there were several enemies, which I wasn't too worried about until I saw a dark elf witch. I tried to fight them all, but I quickly ran out of food to heal myself. So being low on health, I left this cave to come back later when I was much stronger. While running for my life out of the cave, I noticed I had 5 blessing points, so I took a moment to use them. First, I increased my damage with axes by 20%. The second point went into no longer taking fall damage. The third point went into not taking damage while evading. The fourth point went into retaining mana when swapping weapons. And finally, my fifth and last point went into being able to self-revive if I ever have to go down. Continuing my journey, I went to yet another cave. This one looked a little different than the first, but I was immediately swarmed by werewolves. After taking them out, I was already out of food, before I had even gotten across this bridge. I took a small peek at what was waiting for me across the bridge, and of course, it was another dark elf witch. With no food and less than a third of my health remaining, I left this place to come back later just like the first cave. I spent the rest of the day gathering resources, fighting a few of the dark elves, and then headed home for the night. Day 5 started with me digging a few holes and planting some stone, butter burr, and mushroom essences. Before leaving, I also crafted Sigan's Blade. Then, I went to Fafnir the Sorcerer from day 2 in order to buy a few things. I bought some healing potions, maple sap, red meat, salmon, sorcerer, and outpost maps. Now, these maps would reveal sorcerer and outpost locations on the map even if I hadn't discovered the area they are in yet. While I was here, I also took the chance to use another blessing point on Ethune's Seedling. This would give my combo attacks a 10% chance to deploy a seedling that would provide healing for me. Going back to the land of pools, I found this goblin camp. I grabbed the first chest I found and then I ran into a troll, but it seemed to be stuck inside of this arena. So I stayed back and lit him up with arrows. This took a while, but eventually I was able to defeat the troll and gain access to this prestigious treasure. After clearing that camp, I continued exploring this area until I came across yet another troll. This time, instead of arrows, I went in close with my new blade. This was actually a better fight than I originally thought it would have been, and I defeated him fairly quickly, but I was immediately ambushed by a lindworm. Thankfully for me, I had this new healing ability and blade to beat this dragon-like beast. After that, I went into the arena to see what terrible thing was inside. It was Yarn Saxa, one of the bosses in Midgard. Seeing that whopping 47,000 health made me immediately turn around and leave. For now. Day 6 started with me finding another goblin camp like yesterday. And just like the last one, there was a giant troll inside. But doing things a little differently this time, I managed to get past the troll inside of the arena. Using my blade seemed to make this fight much quicker, and after only getting hit once, I defeated this troll and collected the treasure inside. While exploring more in the land of pools, I took down several lindworms, which eventually leveled me up. 
I used my new blessing point on increasing my sword damage by 20%. Now I thought I was pretty strong, so I decided to head back to one of those caves giving me trouble from the other day. Before heading inside, I thought it would be a good idea to clear this large camp next to the cave. I beat several dark elves and then the witch at the top and claimed the treasure. So now I was ready to go back into this cave. Man, I could not have been more wrong. I made it to the witch again and absolutely wailed on her, blowing through all of my food and yet the witch still had half of her health and a lot of reinforcements. Clearly, I had underestimated this cave once again, so I left, hoping maybe third time's a charm. On day seven, I built the boat dock and then crafted two boats. And the second would be in case I lose the first. Taking my boat to the ash beach north of my camp, I set sail for the very first time. I eventually found another beach and landed there to see if there was anything new about this place. The only new thing I found was this unsunken war chief, who was tough as nails and dealt way too much damage. But it made sense, seeing as the power rating here was 260 and mine was only 238. And for reference, my beach where I took off from was only a 90 rating. But after making my way off the beach, there wasn't much different about this place. So I headed back to my boat and set sail again. Not long after, I found another beach to investigate. Heading inland, I found the seed of Yggdrasil. Putting in all of the resources I had, I unfortunately did not see what this was going to do, but I did start the invasion. Within a few moments, I was being swarmed by several different creatures from dark elves to hell things to boars. And by the end of it, I did get more ancient cores and the emerald soil that this seed needed. On top of that, I finally reached level 10, which gave me my first mount. Riding through this new land, I headed for the sorcerer. This one was selling these flippers, which I could use to upgrade the tanning stand at home. But I needed more souls, since I gave all of mine to the seed. So, I went on a bit of a soul hunt. While gathering souls, I decided on day 8 to head to this nearby outpost. Not only was this structure new to me, but so were the enemies. They were red elves imbued with fire from Muspelheim. There was also these Lavatir, which were like molten creatures, which looked awesome and dealt some devastating damage. But anyways, fighting through these new creatures, I reached to the top of this structure and looted the chest. Back at the trader, I used all of my souls to buy these flippers. I then decided to explore this place more and found another event. There was a rooster of Ragnarok running around, so using my horse I was able to grab it and gain these event fragments. Anyways, after that, I didn't find much else and after almost dying here, I knew it was time to leave. I set sail yet again and this time I found an ashen beach. Immediately I noticed a different type of resource that I had never seen before. I continued searching this place for more gold. I ran into some enemies which I have no idea what they were, but one was an elite and seemed to be giving the others a boost. So with no food and only one third of my health, I decided to perform a tactical retreat. Sadly, my first boat seemed to be protected by enemies, so I placed my backup boat and sailed home. Finally, I was almost back to my camp, but I had only a little bit of health and I was being chased by a few wolves. Thankfully, the large hammer lady saved me yet again. Starting day 9 early, I was able to use the gold I acquired on day 8 to upgrade my mining stand. Doing this allowed me to craft cut stone and wrought iron, both of which were necessary for upgrading structures. I was able to upgrade my weapon furnace to level 3 using the wrought iron I was just talking about. I then crafted the serpent's tongue sword with a 93 rating. I then upgraded to the Nornir Bow, which has an 85 rating. After the weapons were done, I upgraded the Tanning Stand to level 2, which would allow me to craft Oiled Leather, which was another useful resource for upgrading. For the rest of the day, I went around my island, unlocking the map so that I could see all of it. While exploring, I decided to give one of the caves from a few days ago another try. Going in with only my sword wasn't working too well, but switching to my bow and hitting this Dark Elf Witch seemed to work. Because of my bow's paralyzing ability, enemies couldn't reach me, so all I had to do was keep my distance. After clearing all of the enemies, I found two chests inside of this cave, and acquired a ton of loot. On day 10, I went to another cave on my island. I used the same tactic of shooting arrows from afar at the witch and the other dark elves. This cave was also absolutely filled with loot. After this fight, I went to a large camp and fought yet another dark elf witch. Once it was cleared, I used a blessing point to get a 25% chance to recover meals consumed. 
I used another point on Weakening Dew, which allows me to weaken enemies armor and damage after hitting them with combo attacks. I used my third point for the ability to build wrath when dealing damage. My last point was into Sin's Shield Wall, which doubles my armor value with my shield out. By now it was getting late, but I decided to continue searching this island, and eventually I found another cave. In this cave, I started out pretty strong using the sword, but as always, I ran out of food and had to resort to using my bow again. Once again, this place was littered with loot. Anyways, after clearing that cave, I decided to travel back to my camp. Starting my 11th day, I checked my benches for which resources I would need to upgrade. After, I sailed to a new island. And after failing this goal, I headed inland to hide my shame. This smoky highlands biome is home to several resources I'd need to upgrade my benches and equipment. Some resources I got here included garnets, obsidian, vines, and large bones. Still exploring the smoky highlands on day 12, I came across this goblin camp. With one simple mistake, I went down. I was being beaten up by these two goblins, but luckily I had my self-revive perk, and after using it, I decided to get some payback. But then of course, as we all know, I'm a professional survival game expert and I would never make the same dumb mistake twice, right? Since this world wasn't permadeath, I decided to keep venturing on. I spent a large part of the day sailing back to where I had died. Exploring a different route this time, which opened up more of this island, I eventually found my way back to my items. And after getting my stuff back, I did get my revenge on this troll and looted the rest of the camp. For the rest of the night, I killed enemies and gathered resources while uncovering more of this island. Starting on day 13, I continued gathering resources from this island. While farming these resources, I ran into a loot goblin. Luckily for me, this little guy was full of resources that I needed. I then went inside this underpass. Here there was actually a lot of gold inside, which would be super useful for upgrading. However, while I was here, I ran into this named werewolf, and he was much stronger than I had anticipated. Personally, I think this is a good thing, as it does show that I'm not completely invincible as we saw the past few days. Anyways, I escaped the underpass, and then decided to test my luck and fight a goblin camp with a giant troll inside again. Somehow, that went well, and I was able to grab the chest inside. I continued my adventure to the coast and hopped back on my boat. Sailing to a new nearby Ashen Beach Island, I cleared this unsunken camp. I was able to kill the war chief inside, surprisingly, but that was the end of my day. Day 14 started with me sailing and unlocking parts of my map. I sailed back home and decided it was time to give my sword an upgrade. I crafted Sigan's Blade level 2. I also crafted Serpent Tongue level 2, since it had a higher damage rating. Continuing this trend of upgrading, I improved my shield rack to level 3 and then crafted Golveg's Guard. I also improved my armor loom to level 3 as well. Unfortunately, I couldn't craft a new set of armor just yet as I was missing the Fire Elf Ambers. Moving on, I then upgraded my tool grinder to level 3 as well. Doing so allowed me to upgrade all of my stone tools into silver ones. I then upgraded the grinder to level 4 since I already had all of the materials for it. I was able to upgrade both of my axes into crystal, but I was missing silver, so I couldn't complete my set of tools. Back over at the weapon furnace, I was able to also upgrade my Nornir bow to level 2. This brought my day to an end. With the start of day 15, I traveled north of my base to the arena. My goal was to beat my first boss. With over 47,000 health, Yarn Saxa was going to be a real challenge for me. The Thunder Goddess attacked with her spear up close, and would shoot these tracking thunderbolts for range. I realized I could stall the thunderbolts with my bow and arrows. However, they didn't do much damage to the boss, so I needed a new strategy. I got in close with my Dark Element Sword, called Serpent's Tongue. This did way more damage. I mean, 4 to 600 damage was a huge improvement from the 100 damage that I was doing with arrows. That being said though, I only realized this just now, but there are actually other arrows that deal more damage. Finally, after this long and challenging fight, I came out victorious. From Yarn Saxa, I got several resources, but, but the most important thing was the Shard of Yarn Saxa's brooch and Yarn Saxa trophy. 
Back at my camp, I turned in this new trophy, and the kind hammer lady gave me two golden horns, which I could use for unlocking tons of amazing cosmetics. Using one of my shards from Yarn Saxa, I built a quest board. This board let me complete a bunch of different quests of varying difficulties for some really good rewards like souls, fragments, weapons, armor, and some useful maps to places like sorcerer's lairs and more. I also collected all of the resources that had been growing in my small garden. On day 16, I sailed on the ocean looking for new lands. I was in luck as I had discovered a new island. Here I found the Glacier Peaks biome. This is where I could find sapphires, unfrozen warriors carrying the unfrozen talismans, frozen pine bark, and a new boss arena. But unfortunately for me, since this place was so cold, I couldn't stay long enough to do any serious farming. The rest of the day, I went around the same island farming resources in the land of pools. On my 17th day, I cleared several enemy camps along the way, giving me a ton of chests to loot. But not much really happened for this day, and to end it, I set off for another island to do even more farming to hopefully progress my workstations. I was here to gather even more resources, found only in the highlands, like large bone piles and garnets. I then went inside of this cave to get to another part of the island. Inside, I actually found a ton of gold, as usual, which would be incredibly useful for upgrading and crafting. After clearing the cave, I used my blessing point on critical hits 1, which would give me a 30% chance to deal the highest combo damage. While exploring this part of the island, I also found this arena with Halogi, another giant boss with over 140,000 health. I was pretty intimidated, I'm not going to lie, as I should have been, so I left. At one point, I was only one hit from death while being chased by this werewolf, but luckily I continuously dodged away and kept shooting him with arrows. But that was pretty much it for my day. Since I was still near the Halogi Arena, I decided for day 19 to head inside and fight this god of flames. This was a long and stressful fight. At one point I got complacent and took a ton of damage head on. But I didn't make that mistake again, and I tried to keep my distance while shooting arrows. Eventually though, I got bored of using arrows. so. Then I went in close with my sword and dealt way more damage. Hit after hit after hit, I brought this giant's health down slowly, but You're soon dead. it was finally it was over. Leaving the arena, I made a new fast travel shrine. That way I could possibly come back in the future, if needed. Using the shrine to get back home, I crafted the Golveg armor set. Sadly, I couldn't craft the boots, but I got everything else, so good enough for now, right? I also upgraded my shield rack to level 4. I wanted to upgrade the armor loom, however, I was missing these fire elf ambers. I also upgraded my weapon furnace to level 4, and with it, I was able to upgrade to Sigan's Blade level 3. Then, I upgraded my construction bench to level 3, which enabled me to build a construction rig. This rig unlocked a higher tier of structures, so instead of building in twigs, I was now building in wood. And after all of this building, I went to Fafnir the Sorcerer and bought several maps to unlock more locations. For day 20, I upgraded my bow to the Nornir bow level 3. And for the rest of day 20, I decided to kind of take note of all the resources I needed to actually progress further in the game and what kind of gear sets and weapons I wanted to work towards, as it's kind of important to have goals in these series, right? Anyway, not much else happened for the rest of the day, I was kind of just taking inventory. Starting on day 21, I traveled through a cave to reach another part of the island. Inside, I ran into several enemies, and after leaving this cave, I spent much of the day gathering resources and clearing goblins. But, I ran inside of another cave packed full of goblins at the entrance. I found a pretty big treasure chest inside, making this cave slightly worth exploring. Diving further into this cave, I came across two legendary werewolves, but I made pretty quick work of them. After leaving that cave, I found a fortress. Fortresses are similar to a dungeon in Diablo, and I really like that. Moving from room to room, clearing out every enemy I encountered, this location was easily one of my favorites. But before I could escape this place, my day was ending. For day 22 of my journey, I continued clearing this hideout, until eventually, I reached a large room with a new type of chest that I hadn't seen before. 
But as I inspected the room, a giant legendary troll snuck up on me. After defeating that troll, I thought it was clear until yet another one appeared from a corner of the room. And that wasn't the last. And finally, after clearing the fourth and last troll, I could claim my treasure from this stronghold. Leaving that place, I headed to an ashen beach island. While I was here, I collected a few resources like amethyst and seaweed. Finally, for the rest of the night, I returned to the sea, sailing and unlocking more of the map of Midgard. Continuing my journey on the sea for day 23, I eventually came across a new island. Here, I found and spoke with another sorcerer. I bought several unfrozen talismans and sapphires from this sorcerer, all of which I would need to progress. After that, I built a teleporting shrine next to this sorcerer to return later if I needed more of these resources. Returning home with these items, I could further upgrade my tool grinder to level 5. I then decided to spend my night rebuilding my farming area. First, I covered the old holes after collecting their resources. Then, I placed the new holes spaced out one block from each other to access them more easily. After that, I began planting all of the seeds and resources that I had. Finally, before the day ended, I crafted the Utgard armor set. On day 24, after checking what resources I would need to continue my progress, I realized I would need wrought iron, which requires regular iron to make. So I headed out into the land of pools, where I had found many resources like iron and gathered every piece that I could find. After some gathering, I sailed to a new Ash Beach Island nearby to turn in a quest from my board, as I wanted to see how good these missions were. Clearing the outpost on the beach, I headed inland and found this villager named Asta, to whom I gave 20 fur. I was rewarded with a level 1 hammer, a sorcerer map, quest fragments, and souls. Not bad for a 5 minute mission as I already had all of the resources. But to end my day, I sailed to yet another new island where this gateway had been. And then, before the next day started, I went inside. Starting on day 25, I arrived in a new realm known as Niflheim. This new place had new resources such as Nightbloom and Ice Burst. But with a new realm came new enemies, like the Draugr, and these new type of hell things. For anyone keeping track, the power rating here was 400. This was the closest to my current level that I had seen so far. While exploring this new realm, I encountered a bridge with a guard in front of it. Speaking to this guard, she explained that, that the goddess Hell had changed, becoming corrupted. She mentioned a golden god and some dying roots. At the time, I wasn't too sure who the other god she spoke of might have been but the roots she mentioned reminded me of the Yggdrasil. But I continued my journey exploring this new realm, gathering its resources and defeating the enemies here until I decided to leave by the end of the day. Day 26 picked up in a cave that I needed to traverse to reach another part of this island that I had been exploring. As always, gold, fire elves, and goblins were very abundant inside. But after clearing this cave, I eventually stumbled upon another stronghold similar to the one from days 21 and 22. Going from room to room, dispatching all of the enemies inside, I finally reached the stronghold treasure chest. After spending most of the day inside of this stronghold, I continued exploring the island, gathering resources, and fighting hell things and elves. For day 27, I continued exploring this new island I had found the day before. Along my way, I gathered several resources, found many enemies, and even completed this event where I had to save this prisoner. I also found a seed of Yggdrasil and completed the invasion, which rewarded the soil I needed to continue upgrading it. Unfortunately, there was a cooldown on when I could do another invasion to continue upgrading this tree. Starting day 28 where day 27 left off, I built a portal shrine and used it to get back home. Arriving home, I upgraded my shield rack to level 5. 
But with that, I realized to upgrade to better weapons and armor, I would need to head back to the Glacier Peaks. Here I gathered several resources and cleared multiple camps, collecting the treasures inside. Eventually, I found another portal to a different area known as the Volcanic Spire. Going through this gateway, I had arrived on a completely isolated volcanic island, but it seemed I was still in Midgard. Exploring this new island though, I found gold and obsidian. Still, more importantly, there were small nodes of pyre stone, which is precisely what I needed more of to upgrade. As far as enemies go on this island, I faced the Lavatir again, some which were legendary and had more molten armor, and also the Moosebalorm, which was like a giant serpent that shot lava. Yet another day on the volcanic spire. I explored much of this island, but I didn't find really anything at the time. After several fights with enemies, I eventually ran out of food and potions to heal myself. So I started heading back to the gateway, even going down at one point and almost dying. But I revived myself and continued my return. Once home, I checked what I was missing to fully upgrade my armor loom to craft the best armors. Sadly, it was a resource I hadn't even seen yet called Fossagrim Fumes. After some research, I learned this resource can be found by defeating a creature known as the Fossagrim. A type of water spirit found on Ashen Beach Islands, whom I had faced before. I then decided to craft this Balder Bulwark Shield, named after the god Balder. Starting day 30 where I left off yesterday, I decided to leave this Ash Beach Island and head for a nearby landmass. Arriving on this new land, I soon found a seed of the world tree and decided to level it up once. However, I needed a piece of the soil to continue making upgrades like this. So, I started the invasion. This one was fairly easy as it comprised mostly wild animals like boars and wolves. And after completing it, I acquired the needed soil and upgraded to level 3. I was officially broke at this point unfortunately, so I left this area and continued my journey. I explored more of this island as I had wanted to build a portal shrine back to the seed of Yggdrasil. But unfortunately, I had no luck. Leaving the island, I came to yet another ash beach, looking for more Fossagrim. I almost lost my boat and my life after trying to swim. But luckily, I made it back on board after not finding anything on the island. I jumped from one island to the next, gathering a few Fossagrim fumes. To start my 31st day, I finally upgraded my weapon furnace to level 5. I stopped a minute to look at what weapons I could craft now. I saw Baldur's Blade and Sigin's Blade level 4, which just so happened to be my favorite swords to use. I left my base and headed for the Yarnsaxa Arena. This giant boss was back and now stronger at level 2. But I was also much stronger and made this battle end quickly. Going back home, I realized I was missing one more trophy from Yarn Saxa to make this weapon. So I decided to farm for resources in the land of pools for most of the day, and then at night I came back home and crafted more pieces to the Valar set of armor. To start my 32nd day, I finally finished crafting all of the Valor set of armor. Setting sail on my new larger boat, which does not turn very well, I came back to another island with a seed of, of Yggdrasil. I attempted the invasion in order to upgrade the seed. Unfortunately though, I was unable to successfully defend it, and now I would not only have to retry the invasion, but I also had to rebuild it with even more of my souls. I then traveled back to the arena of Hologi, and for some reason he had no health, so after hitting him once, I gathered his trophies. And nothing else really happened after that. Picking up on my 33rd day, I discovered this new island which had a strange serpent icon in the middle of it. Investigating this island, I found what seemed to be a small outpost. Inside, I fought several enemies, including Vossagram, which I still needed. After searching the island and not finding much else, I headed back out to sea. I soon found another island to explore, but there really wasn't anything incredibly interesting there, so we can move on. 
uncovering another new island, I realized I needed to spin my blessing points. This time around, I went with 50% chance to resist stun and slow effects, and gaining HP when hitting enemies with my blast, which was one of my favorite abilities. For day 34, I found this island with another strange icon on it. Exploring this island, I found a strange structure that reminded me of some sort of portal that wasn't activated yet. There wasn't much else to this place besides that, so I carried on with my plans to explore more of Midgard. I soon came across another Glacier Peaks Island. I decided to fully uncover it as my mission was to hopefully discover more of this world's secrets like all of the other gateways that I found before. Sadly, there weren't any secrets here, so I moved on. I found another island, but there wasn't much here either. And on my way away from this island, I got my boat stuck and decided to wiggle my way out. But that didn't really work, and instead it actually got me killed. First off the boat on day 35, I managed to recover all of my loot from the previous day. Moving on, I know I said I wasn't going to be doing a lot of these quests, but I did spend the rest of the day doing two different missions, and to me, the loot wasn't really worth an entire day's worth of sailing, but it is what it is. After this, I really don't spend much time getting to these quests until much later on. For day 36, I went back to farming Fossigrim fumes. I traveled to several Ashen Beach Islands using my new teleporter network, and I gathered several fumes thanks to it. But my farming didn't end here. I decided to take a break from the Ashen Beaches, and instead focused on exploring this new island. On this new island, I wound up in my favorite biome, the Land of Pools. Here, I defeated a large number of goblins, lundworms, and trolls. While at the same time, I gathered several things like iron, silver, mushrooms, stone, and wood. Eventually though, night had come, and that was the end of my day. On day 37, I was still on the island from day 36, and after several in-game hours of gathering resources, I decided to head back home. Once home, I realized I could finally craft the Potion Brewer. This would now allow me to craft healing potions, which was such a massive milestone for me. I even had enough resources to upgrade it to level 2. For the rest of my day, I went back to a new island exploring its forests and looting its caves. For day 38, I picked up where I left off days ago, traveling from island to island, fighting Fossigrim. And after several islands were cleared, I headed to one of the saplings of Yggdrasil. I had been trying to grow for a while now. After repairing it and donating several resources and souls to it, I started the invasion to continue its progress. This felt like a fairly long invasion, with wave after wave of enemies thrusting themselves at the sapling. Eventually though, I managed to defeat all of the enemies here, and with the timer now active, I headed to yet another sapling. This sapling felt much more difficult than most others, as I had to deal with trolls along with all of the other enemies. Wave after wave, the sapling's health dropped to a very alarming amount. But luckily for me, I was just fast enough to protect it from the remaining enemies. And yet with that, another timer would be activated. Day 39 was a relatively simple day. I traveled back to the realm of Niflheim. I came back to this bridge and realized in order to cross it, I needed to donate some resources. While I did have some of these items, I needed to find more. So I spent the day exploring this realm, fighting the enemies, clearing the camps, and gathering the resources needed. I eventually found this really interesting spot to fish. And after clearing the area of enemies, I decided to do some fishing. Luckily, these fish were some of the last resources I was going to need in order to access the bridge later on. Heading back to the bridge on day 40, I unlocked it fully, and exploring it, I found a portal to Hell's Lair. But I was worried I'd be too weak for this area, so I left. Once I was home, I realized I had enough to upgrade my armor loom to level 5 as well. With this upgrade, I could now make Baldur's armor. However, I figured I would need even more of this resource from the boss Yarn Saxa, so I headed to the arena. Given how much stronger I am now, this fight was very easy, so once it was over, I went back home, and with just barely enough, I made the full set of Baldur's golden armor. However, now I wanted his sword too, but I would now need to wait until Yarn Saxa's arena opened again before I could make it. 
With all of this new armor, I was now 694 power, up from 679 previously. With all of the resources I had gathered the past few days, I was able to upgrade my construction rig to level 4, allowing me to build the construction table. This new workbench would let me construct hopefully incredible stone structures, but I'm not very good at building, so we'll see. And for the rest of the night, I chopped down tons of trees as I was going to build a small new area for crafting. Now I had one goal in mind for these next 10 days, 41 through 50. And that was to build a slightly better crafting area, since I was kind of homeless right now. It shouldn't have taken me that long. I spent days chopping down trees and crafting a couple of nice pathways, which looked pretty awesome to me, but that's not much of a base. I continued chopping down trees and mining stones to craft this area. Like I always say, I am not a builder, and the building system in this game can be very time consuming, if you're new to it like I was. As I said, I spent these 10 days just trying to come up with something. And while it's not much to look at, I was just proud of myself for doing something and not sitting outside with no protection for 100 days. I figured it would be pretty boring to go through each of these days and talk about how I chopped down trees, the next day chopped down more trees, and then the third, fourth, and fifth day of chopping down more trees. Or how it took me a while to develop this simple walking path. Either way, it was finished for now. And I didn't want to put a roof on it because making a roof would have only taken longer to build and it just covers so much of the screen, so I decided against it. But the one thing that I did that wasn't related to chopping down trees was that I crafted a brand new set of armor. And I also crafted Baldur's Sword, which was pretty awesome too. One of my favorites actually. On day 51, I headed back to the Volcanic Spire. My goal was to simply explore a bit more of this island and activate the Yggdrasil tree that was here. This was a relatively simple and easy goal to accomplish. I had to spend most of the day traversing this harsh lava filled terrain, but it was actually very easy since I'm at a power rating of 735 now. Once I arrived at the seed, I had to restore it, but I didn't really want to do the invasion there as I thought it actually would have been difficult. So. I decided to leave the area and come back when I had a better plan for this invasion. Heading back home, I noticed on the map Yarn Saxa was back in her arena, and I took that personally, so I headed over and kicked her out, claiming it for myself once again, at least until she comes back. On day 52, I decided to begin unlocking more of my map, and really exploring Midgard further. So while on my boat, I headed south. The first island I found, I headed on land, and began exploring. This island was actually pretty interesting. While I did find all of the normal biomes and enemies, I actually found a bridge, which I was able to repair after donating a few resources. This one led to another nearby island, which I thought was pretty cool because I hadn't seen that before. This island also happened to have another one of the stag world events. Day 53 picks up on the same island as day 52. I did explore more of this island, unlocking it on my map. But once that was done, I decided to check out the island across the bridge. On this island, I immediately ran into yet another new portal. And after going inside, it seemed to be another boss fight, but I decided to head back outside, as I wanted to come back when I was a bit stronger, because who knows what lies ahead. I also found another seed of Yggdrasil and restored it, but I left to continue exploring this island a little bit more. I wanted to get as much of the map unlocked as I could because I wanted to be able to fast travel to the key parts of the map later, once I was much stronger. Little did I know, I wasn't going to get much stronger from where I was. Before the night was over, I was back on my boat once again. Sailing around the previous island, I happened to find another one of these serpent icons. I headed inside of this small base on the island, cleared out the enemies, and activated this beacon. Back on the ocean, I came across another larger island, and I spent the rest of the night exploring it. For day 54, I explored all of that island since it wasn't as large as I had thought. Taking a break from my continuous sailing, I headed back to the Halagi Arena. He was now level 5, but I don't think his health really had gone up since the last time I faced him. I did notice this time he had done much more damage to me, but maybe that was because of my own ignorance to his attacks. Once he was defeated, I moved on with my mission to explore Midgard. I found my way back to a seat of Yggdrasil and activated the invasion. This invasion was easy enough to complete, but now as always, I would have to wait to continue upgrading it. 
For day 55, I continued exploring this island. There wasn't anything too interesting about this place, so after exploring the smoky highland biome on the island, I left for yet another island. This one I found did have a seed of Yggdrasil, so I restored it and activated the invasion. Thankfully, the worst thing I had to face in this invasion were the Lindworms, and I was able to beat them pretty quickly. Moving forward, I continued exploring this island. I found another rooster of Ragnarok, which I feel like I hadn't seen in a really long time, but once again, I have no idea what they do. Continuing this journey, I found Fafnir again, and this time I bought several ruin maps, which showed me where to find the, the remaining ruins across the map as these had treasure on them. For my 56th day, I started by sailing from island to island, exploring and unlocking more of Midgard. At one point, I found yet another sapling to grow. I started an invasion, and I don't think I have ever done one on an Ashen Island yet, but it was pretty difficult, which I consider to be a good thing. After fighting several waves of Fossagrim and unsunken warriors, it was all over, but I wasn't quite done with this island. I found another prisoner world event, which was protected by a war chief, but I managed to beat all of the enemies here, and save the prisoner. And then I headed inside of this arena. The boss inside was Angerboda. She was incredibly strong, and her magic was void based, meaning I couldn't use a blade like Sigins. Hit after hit, I slowly took down her health, which she didn't have a lot of, and yet this fight took almost the entire day. Eventually though, I was able to defeat Angerboda. On day 57, I headed back inside of the realm of Niflheim. I had remembered seeing a sapling in here, and I was curious what would happen if I was able to grow all of the saplings in this game. So I started the invasion for the Niflheim sapling. This was definitely one of the hardest invasions for me. These hellthings have so many variations, some have range, some more armored than others, and some are just little fast dog-like creatures. But with a small portion of health left on the sapling, the invasion finally came to an end, and I was awarded the necessary soil to upgrade it. Oh yeah, and by this point I had finally reached level 50, which is the max level in this game. And using my last skill point, I put it into Auroral Solus 2, which gives me a passive plus 6% HP regen. For the rest of my day, I went to another new island and explored as much of it as I could until the day was finally over. Day 58 was a simple and short day. I spent the entire day sailing around the southern part of the map. I discovered and explored multiple islands here, but there wasn't really anything too interesting on any of them. So that's pretty much my entire day. Starting day 59, I was still sailing around the map until I found another island with a serpent icon. On the island, I went inside of this fortress, which held the beacon. Clearing out the enemies inside, I activated this beacon and still at this point, 59 days in, I have no idea what these are for. But I assume it's a boss fight, at least I hope it is. For the rest of my day, I explored several new islands until eventually I decided to head back to the Yarn Saxa arena. Yarn Saxa was now level 6, but still pretty low health. And since I was using Baldur's sword, I decided to switch and use my bow instead, which was void-based damage. After this boss was beaten, I headed home and crafted Sigin's Blade level 4, which was slightly better than my current sword. On day 60, I headed to an island, which I could only see because of the ruins maps that I had bought from a sorcerer a few days ago. In the ruins, you can usually find one treasure chest with some pretty decent loot. And that's what I did. Starting day 61, I entered the arena of this ice boss, which I have no idea how to pronounce his name. This giant was able to take out half of my health with only one hit. So I made it a point to land as many hits as I possibly could in order to constantly be healing. Eventually, this giant was defeated. I then headed home and decided to fight Halagi again, as he had just respawned. But when I got there, he was only one hit. Anyway, heading back home, I figured now would be a good time to figure out what this gateway led to back up in the northeastern corner of the map. So I traveled there. The last time I was here, it wasn't open, but now it seemed to have been activated. Heading inside, I was soon face to face with Jormungandr, also known as the World Serpent. My strategy here was to fire arrows at the serpent as I couldn't seem to reach him with my sword. But eventually, I got bored of playing it safe and got as close to him as I could. 
being this close, I was actually able to land hits on him with my sword. I used every ability I had, but this fight was taking a very long time, as he had over 400,000 health, and that was only at level 1. As long as I kept hitting him, I could win this fight, and that's exactly what I did. Jormungandr was finally slain, and unlike other bosses, he had a chest full of some really good items, including a Jormungandr rune. Traveling back home, I spoke to the Hammer Lady, and for the trophy from the Serpent, I was now able to build a new ship, which looked pretty awesome. I didn't stop there though. I decided to head back to Angraboda and fight her yet again, but this time at level 2. Using Baldur's Lightning Sword, I was able to beat this boss quickly and easily. On day 62, I was fighting the giant wolf boss known as, as Fenrir. This giant wolf was pretty strong with almost 400,000 health and his attacks could pack a nice punch too. Thankfully for me though, the, his attacks were easy to predict, so I was able to maneuver out of the way almost every time. I was still using Baldur's Sword, which dealt a good amount of damage and had an ability where lightning just shoots down in a small area, which I was able to stack a couple of times dealing even more damage. And once Fenrir was defeated, I collected all of the loot and gained a rune of Fenrir. I decided to continue my journey by traveling back to Niflheim. Here I came back to the bridge with the guard outside. I was able to unlock the bridge and head across. Inside I found Baldir, who as luck would have it, was still alive, and more than willing to help me defeat the boss that laid ahead. This boss was hell. She dealt massive damage but seemed kind of weak with only a little more than 300,000 health. And with some pretty crazy attacks, I wailed on hell, as I knew the best way for me to stay alive was to stand my ground. Once she was defeated, I spoke with Baldur. And looking at his character, I didn't really trust him. I mean, come on, look at those eyes. Anyways, I headed through the portal and went back home. On day 63, I made my way through this lava spire and to this last portal, which I hadn't been through yet. Inside, I faced Surtur, the Lava Sinker. This was probably the most intense and intimidating foe I faced. He shot lava all over the platform and had a devastating beam of fire that I managed to tank a couple of times, thanks to my constant healing effects. At one point, I did have to dodge his attack as my healing hadn't worked as well as I would have liked. Eventually though, like many other bosses, I was able to defeat Surtur. And once I was back through the portal to my home, I found yet another new portal in the stones near the Hammer Lady. I decided to jump through this new portal. I had been transported to Valhalla. However, it was being besieged by several of the enemies whom I had faced in Midgard, including the goblins, fire elves, and werewolves. For some reason, these enemies were fighting together, and the only way I could find out why is by making my way through to the Great Hall. Upon arriving at the Great Hall, I was face to face with Loki, the god of mischief. After confronting him, he told me about the trap he had laid for me using Baldur, as he knew I would come to save him. But before I could fight Loki, he jumped through a portal and became unreachable. But the fight wasn't over there. He summoned something new which I had never seen in this land before. It was a Gorgon, like Medusa from ancient Greek mythology. But why was it here of all places? Questions aside, I faced this Gorgon with its 400,000 health. Even with this creature's acid attacks and the ceiling above me caving in, I was able to keep my health up and continue the fight. After dodging several incoming attacks and dealing more damage to the Gorgon, eventually this fight was over, and it was sent back to its own world. And with that, the story seems to end. By now, I had beaten every boss in the game, and seen everything that there was to see, but I decided not to end my journey there. With my last 30 something days, I decided to try and complete as much of this game as possible. I did every boss several times, and got two of them to the max level of 10. Unfortunately, these bosses have a cooldown timer after each time they're defeated. The fights were admittedly easy for a very long time, until around levels 9 and 10. These bosses became very difficult. Most had almost doubled their original health and dealt way more damage. I tried using the corresponding armor types and weaknesses, but this only helped a little bit. The next thing I worked on was, was the Yggdrasil seeds. These were more difficult than just attacking a singular boss. It requires tens of thousands of souls, boss trophies, and whatever soil matches that location. 
At first, I didn't think you could build near the saplings, but eventually I learned and found the best way for me to defend these trees was to build simple walls. Like the bosses, I managed to level two of them to the max level of five. But as I said, this was not easy. I also decided to try and build another new structure, but I didn't get to finish it. By day 100, I had done so much in this game. I had a lot of fun playing it. I hope you enjoyed my 100 days. And until next time, this is Nomad, signing off.